want to talk to you guys about something that we in the women's ministry have been going through. We've been, we started out in some series this year, and we started out in the series of prayer. And I thought it was pretty amazing when they started praying on Sunday nights because, man, us girls, how many of you girls are in the house? We were there, right? We were, we were pressing in. We were leaning in. We were getting in God's face, and God was answering our prayers. And I believe that God saw the heart of our girls, and I believe God wants the body as a whole, the men and the women, to come together and wants us to pray because I believe that there's a powerful force when we come together in prayer. I know that it activates heaven. I know that hell shudders when we start praying because then all of a sudden that tool and those weapons that God has given us begin to come alive inside of our hearts and new things are birthed. But before we can go there, I believe God wanted to start in a very simple place with us. We're talking tonight about intimacy with God. Because prayer is not just making our requests known, it is that. Prayer is not just, you know, going when somebody's hurt or when somebody needs healing to go and be with them and pray. Absolutely, 100%. But I believe prayer is also intimacy with our King, our Lord of Lords, our God, the one who created the heavens and the earth. I believe he longs to be with us and he longs to know our hearts and he, he longs for us to know him in such an intimate place. And sometimes we've been hurt by this world. Can I get an amen? People in this world will let us down. They're going to say things that are going to make our hearts rigid and and hard. There's going to be failed marriages. There's going to be broken relationships. There's going to be broken trust on sexual levels. Maybe you've been molested or raped. Maybe things have happened to you in your life and you have a very hard time connecting on an intimate level. And I know that the king of the universe never intended for it to be that way. He wants us to break down our walls, to break down the barriers, to allow him in, allow him to be true to our hearts, allow us to have ears to hear and hearts to receive, because I know he wants to say something to us tonight. There was a man that I was listening to, and he was a, he was a pastor. He'd been a pastor for probably over 40 years. And he told his story, so I'm going to tell it to you. And he said it was summertime, and he decided that he was going to read a whole bunch of books that summer. And he started reading a book about sex. Now, he said he had been married for many, many years. And as he's reading this book, when he got to the end of this book, he said, Wow, I realize a couple things after reading this book. Number one, I'm not as good at it as I thought I was. Number two, I don't know as much as I thought I did. And number three, wow, I don't know if I'll ever get there. But then he read a different book later on. By the way, that was a Christian sex book that he read. But then he read another book on prayer later that summer. By the time he got to the end of the book on prayer, he said to himself, Wow, I didn't know as much as I thought I knew. Wow, I didn't learn, I didn't like understand the depth of what it was I was reaching. I didn't understand it as well. He said the same things he said about the book on sex as he did about the book on prayer. And in his prayer time, he said to God, I don't get it. I have this incredible relationship with my wife. I've been married over 40 years, and I believe our sex life is good. She hasn't complained. And then he said, and God, me and you, oh, we've been close. My whole life I've been saved, Lord. I've I've sought you out. I've searched you out. And God said to him, the comparison and the unity here is because it all is based out of intimacy. You see, you don't have to be great at prayer. You don't have to be great and know everything about prayer. What builds a relationship in a marriage is not sex, right? It's the intimacy of it. What builds a relationship with God is not knowing all and following the formulas, but it's the intimacy of talking with him. It's the intimacy of seeking him out. It's the intimacy of longing to be in his presence. And when he told that story, it unlocked for me, and I said, yes. Oh, God, that I long for your intimacy. I love my husband, Dan. He's probably the most amazing husband in the whole world. He loves the Lord more than anything in this world. But I'll tell you something. Dan can never give to me what God can give to me. And he knows that, and he's okay with it. Because what I seek from God is only given to me by God. 
because he formed me, he created me, he knows my inner being, he knows my thoughts, he knows my insecurities, he knows our weaknesses, he knows the requests, he knows those deep inner vows that we've created, that we've buried, he knows how to get our attention. And God is asking for us tonight to seek him. So just some simple things. You know, God wants a relationship more with us than I believe we want with him. In the Bible, in James, it talks about that he yearns for us. Did you know he yearns for us? Because he's jealous for us. Because he wants to be with the ones he created. Before your mom and your dad got together, before however it was that you were formed and brought into this world, he knew you. He formed you. He equipped you. He gifted you. And he loves you. And yet sin comes into our lives and separates us from God. And I believe it's this journey that God is saying, can you come back, oh son, oh daughter, I so long to want those moments with you again. If I could just have your ear for a second. If I could just be the first person you go to instead of the last one you run to. Could I just be the one that you go to? Instead of calling the friend, talking to the cousin and the auntie and the uncle and everybody in the whole world, but you never consulted God. You see, he loves us so much, we were never created to be apart from him. And prayer is what connects us back to him. In our prayer time, that's when we can seek him out. So the simple things in prayer that God is asking for us to keep a simple and intimate relationship is number one, to seek him. (coughs) Sorry, I've been getting over a little bit of breathing issues, but in the name of Jesus. Seeking him at all cost. Seeking him in all times. Seeking him. When it's not easy to go to God, because sometimes we feel like he's this far off, distant God, right? I need somebody tangible. I need to go talk to the one that that can hold my hand while I'm crying. But you see, when we begin to build this relationship, he's the only one that'll be enough comfort for you when you're crying. He's the only one that when your kids are doing what they should not be doing, that will be able to give you the answers and lead you right to the scriptures and give you the right still small voice and give you the direction on how to be led to pray for those children. God loves you so much that he just wants to talk. He just wants to be with you. He just wants you to consider him first. In the Bible it says in Matthew 6.33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It's easy for us to get distracted in our lives, and and when life hits, I love what Pastor Jim said this morning during announcements. He was just giving announcements, and he said such an incredible word, and he said, those that are hurting and broken, sometimes I wonder, did you just not pray? Last night, my daughter ran into my room in the middle of the night, and she, I can hear her running. We, we live in this old house, and so you can hear every creak on the floor. And you know, mama's supersonic ears. I'm like, and she runs, and she comes to my side of the bed because she knows dad is not even going to wake up. And so she comes over to my side of the bed, and I'm like, what, Chloe? And she's 11. And you know, she has fought a good fight of faith already at 11 years old. My girl knows how to fight the devil. And she says, I'm afraid. And I was so tired. My response should have been, well, you know what to do when you're afraid. But I was like, just get in bed. I don't even care. Just get in bed. So I let her lay next to me. And then all of a sudden she started getting hot. And I was like, oh, she's got to go. So I asked her, I'm like, are you comfortable? She's like, no. And I'm like, did you pray? And she goes, no. And I'm like, okay, we are totally doing this backwards. Let's pray. And we prayed right there. And she goes, okay, I'm good. I'm going back to bed. And you know, if Chloe would have, she said to me this morning, she goes, if I would have just prayed before I came to your room, I would have been better, huh? And I'm like, absolutely, you would have been. 
Sometimes we just need each other to remind each other, hey, did you pray before you start talking to me about all this? Have you talked to the one who wants that intimate, close relationship with you? Because he's the one that's going to give you the right advice. He's the comforter. He's the restorer. He's the one who's the father to the fatherless. He's the one who knows your brokenness but knows your restoration. He's the one who died on a cross so that we could live. He's the one that wants your best. You can trust him. He won't hurt you. He won't let you down. He won't break you apart. He will lift you up. He will rebuild you so that you can be more, listen to me, more than a conqueror. Do you know what that means? It means it's already been done in the spirit realm. He's already gone to the cross on your behalf. That means you just have to walk it out in your life because you are more than a conqueror because you already paid a price. We have to talk to that God. Did you know you can talk to him? That we can approach the throne room of God with all grace and all mercy and we can just come as his sons and his daughters and he's waiting for us. The Lord gave me a word for somebody just recently and he said, I want you to tell her I'm waiting for her. And to go back to her first love. And I thought, woo. And he goes, I've been waiting from the day she separated from me for her. And I just sat there like, oh God, you've been waiting this long for her to talk to you. And it's been years. And listen to me. You might be sitting in this room going, I have a hard time talking to God. I just don't know what to say sometimes. I just don't know how to begin. And you know what? This is what you say, God, I have a hard time talking to you because I don't know what to say. And I don't know where to begin with this. And you know what he says? He'll whisper a still, small nothing. And you'll go, what was that? The cool thing about God and intimacy is he doesn't give you like paragraphs and phrases. A lot of times it'll be like a couple words and it'll mean like the whole entire universe to you. And you're like, I'm totally ready to go now. Because he's amazing. And he just wants to talk to us. He just wants us to set aside time to be with him. Deuteronomy 4.29, it says, But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him. And if you seek him with all of your heart and all of your soul, he will be found. I don't know about you, but I want to find God. I don't want to miss out on my day. I don't want... You know, I got a bad report two Fridays ago. The doctors, I went in for this thing, you know, and I'm thinking I'm just going to get some medicine. They sent me to a CT scan and told me I had blood clots or cancer. And I sat in that room. And the first thing I thought to myself was, I don't want to call anyone right now. I'm talking to you, God. What is this? And the fighter in me came out. If you don't know me, I'm pretty feisty. And he goes, well, what are you going to do about it, daughter? And I said, oh, hell no. I am not going to keep this. This is not my report. It's got to go. I will go through the process, but this is not where I'm landing. And the fighter inside of me came up out of me. You know why? Because I talked to God. Because I know him so intimately that he was able to speak to me and stir me up. Come on, get your fighter spirit out, girlfriend. Sword out, shield up. You know how to do this. And sure enough, as soon as I walk out of the room and there is Mignon... (laughs) And I'm trying to be tough. And she's like, why are you here? What is going on? And she prays for me. I'm sure the whole hospital thought we were crazy because we were just praying all out loud and we just didn't even care. And we moved right on. And, and you know what? That's what intimacy is. That in that moment, I wasn't scared anymore. I had to drive to the hospital by myself. Dan kept saying, you want me to come? You want me to come? I'm thinking, no, I don't really care. Like, I'm good. Like, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid because I have the one who created me sitting right here with me. He loves me. Listen, that's an intimate relationship and he's not a respecter of persons. He loves you just as much as he loves me, just as much as he loves the person who doesn't even know who he is yet. Listen, he loves humanity. He created us, he longs for us, he yearns for us. So let's just talk to God. Number two, let's allow ourselves to have some alone time and listen. Sometimes our world is really noisy. Have you noticed that? I'm telling you, when I used to drive to church with my dad and we were kids, 
We would drive from Ukaipa down here, and I would just always hear, be quiet, you guys. Dad needs to get ready for his message. Da, 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 da. And I never understood. I mean, me and Luke, we were pretty loud, and, and, you know, we would go back and forth with each other. Sometimes Kim was in the car, and then we were really fighting because me and Kim always fought. And so it was just always loud. And today we're driving to church with the kids, and I'm not kidding you, it was constantly loud. It was like, guys, stop talking. Be quiet. Dad needs to be alone with God. And I went right into the mode of like when I was a kid because I understand now that when we're alone with the Lord, when we have that time to just settle our minds down and we're not being distracted by requests of your children or requests of your husband or requests of your work or requests of whatever it is that is in your world, then God can just speak to you. There's a man... An incredible prophet by the name of Elisha. Pretty cool name, huh, Elijah? And he ran to a cave because every one of the prophets had been slaughtered. Israel had turned their back on God. And he's in this cave and God comes to him. In 1 Kings 19, if you want to turn with me there. God comes to him and he, he says, what are you doing here? And his answer to God was, I have been very zealous for the Lord, God of hosts. The children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with your swords. I am alone and left. They seek to take my life. He ran. And then he got, and then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by a great and strong Wind tore the mountains and broke the rocks into pieces, but the Lord was not in it. It was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Listen to this. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And so it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in the mantle, or his cloak. He put his face in his cloak like this. Because it wasn't the noise of the fire or the wind or the earthquake that got his attention. He was not moved by the extra, like the extra things that are going on around him. But when he heard the still, small voice of God, it caught his attention. And he was able to rest And at that moment, God began to speak to him and told him to go out and to anoint a new prophet and to anoint a new king. But it wasn't until he heard from God. You see, everything around you is going to be loud. It is going to look like God. You know, you can see the wind and the rain and the fire and you go, oh, that must be God. He's trying to get my attention. But I don't know about you. In my experiences with God, it's in those alone, intimate times. It's when God is trying to catch my attention. It's when he has to shut everything down, even me. And he has to humble me in my own spot sometimes, and that's not a fun place to be. And then he can talk. And then he gives direction. And then he tells you where the next leading is, and he tells you where the next place is, and he tells you what the next thing is to come. You see, he has the bigger picture on our lives, and he has a bigger picture on eternity. And Satan does not want us to get alone. He does not want us to have those moments with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He will do anything and everything to keep us surrounded and to keep the noise around us very loud so that the voice of God cannot be heard. And women and men in this house, we have to stop and we have to sit and we have to wait on God to listen for his voice to listen for his leading. Ask him what he wants next. See where he wants to go. Don't over-talk him, because it's easy to do. If you're not hearing from him, you'll just start talking, right? Start making your own plans. I think sometimes he just chuckles at us, like, really? You just can't be patient, can you? He loves us so much. He knows what we need. He knows eternity. He knows what's what's in front of us and what's behind us. Our country is in a broken place right now. It is. I'm seeing 
comments on, on social media. People just say anything they want to say now. Christians. And I think to myself, oh, that's not kingdom business. That's not kingdom talk. If Jesus were sitting next to you, would you really write that again? Because he is. You see, faith is not running through our veins any longer, but hatred and disunity. And God is trying to keep the body of Christ. He says, if you guys will come together, you will be a powerful force to be reckoned with. And so I want us to have some intimate moments with the Lord first, but then we're going to pray for unity tonight for our country. We're going to pray tonight for the elections that are coming and for the, where the world is going. Who knows what God has, but I believe whatever he does, he's going to touch and it's going to be blessed and it's going to be anointed. And we're going to pray for healing tonight because I believe God wants to heal the mind, the soul, and the body. So you might just think, oh, it's just, I'm not sick, but is, your, is there things going on in your mind that you're constantly fighting? Are you being tormented? Are there thoughts that are consuming you, not allowing you to have that alone time with him? He wants that to be clear and free so that you can hear him directly, so you can be in his presence constantly. So this is what we're going to do. Before we walk into that, I want to give you an opportunity that if you don't know this God, like I talked about, this intimacy, you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. Maybe you will walk out of this room and you say, well, I don't know if I'm a Christian. I think I'm a Christian. I came to church tonight, right? Or my parents kind of raised us in a Christian home, but I don't know, not really. You know, sometimes they went, sometimes they didn't. Listen, that does not make you a Christian. That does not make you saved. That does not make you ready to go on your way to heaven. My parents raised me in a Christian home my whole entire life. They were pastors, but you know the one thing they told me was that you cannot get to heaven on our account. You will have to find God for yourself. And when you find him, ask him to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. That was a journey for me. I had to work out my own salvation. I had to go through some things. I had to get burned by the fire a couple times. But when I realized that there was a God in heaven who loved me so intimately, who knew me and formed me, who loved me, I could do nothing but run back to him. So maybe you've never met him today. I would love for you to be introduced to him and ask him to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. And maybe you've been running from God and you say, oh, I was that. I was that person. I, I kind of played games. I was lukewarm. I was in and out. And I just, you know, I just didn't really quite know what I wanted. But, you know, tonight I want that intimate relationship. I want that full commitment to God. I'm talking to you tonight then. Jesus says, in Revelation, you're either hot or you're cold, but if you're lukewarm, I will vomit you from my mouth. You say, wait, you were talking about this loving God and now he wants to vomit me out. Listen, he's serious about salvation. He's serious about serving him because he was serious about dying on the cross for your sin. He gave everything so that you could be free from sin. So your sins can be washed away, pure and white as snow. So you can have a new life and a new beginning and a new destiny and a new hope in a new future. Tonight's your night. If you've maybe wondered or thought about it, tonight, let's make sure tonight. Don't walk out of here. You know, you are not promised tomorrow. The people at the IRC, they thought they were just going to a party. They didn't know that they weren't going to walk out of that room and see their families again. We are not promised tomorrow. But you know what we are promised? An eternal life with Jesus Christ. All we have to do is say, yes, I want that. Yes, I want that. So tonight, if you've been running from God instead of to God, I'm talking to you. If you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life, tonight's your night. Let's make it happen. We'll pray with you. And if you have not been sure about it, you've kind of been walking in the fence or not, let's make sure tonight. This is how we're going to do it. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. And you go, oh, man, that's totally embarrassing. I don't really know anybody around here. You are in a very, very safe place. We love you. We've been praying for you to raise your hand. Did you know that? Did you know people were praying for you before you walked into this room? Because we know that it's a special time for you and God to be together. It's the most important decision you will ever make the rest of your life. So do it boldly. 
Jesus says that if you confess me before man, then I will confess you before my Father. But if you deny me before man, then I will deny you before my Father. So tonight, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go one, two, three, and I'm going to clap my hands like that. And when I clap my hands, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. And when you raise your hand, what we're going to do is I will count your hands, and I will see your hand, and that will be your confession in front of men. And then we're going to pray a prayer together, okay? Is that good? You're safe. You're in a good, beautiful place tonight. So those that have never asked Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life, I'm talking to you. Been running from God instead of to God? Let's get right tonight. Let's quit playing games. He loves you. He's calling you home. He's waiting for you. Oh, he's so longing. He yearns for you. And those that maybe aren't sure, tonight let's make sure. So on the count of three, one, two, three. Raise your hand so I can see it. One, two. Anybody else? Three. Anyone else? I'm going to just go slow. If you're going, oh, man, I wish you would be quiet. I just, this is, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit I see you for. The Holy Spirit is longing for you. I see your hand back there. You can put it down. Anybody in the family rooms? Is there any ushers back there? I don't even know if there is. All right. Well, this is what we're going to do because I want to continue on with the night. And then, Joelle, what, what we'll do is we'll take them back at the end, okay? So we're going to pray with you in your seats. Can we do that? Because I want to continue into prayer tonight. So this is how it's going to go. We're going to say a prayer, and you're going to repeat it after us. And we're going to all pray it with you so you're not alone in this. And it's not about the words that come out of your mouth, but it's about your heart behind them. So if you mess up on a word, don't worry about it. Just pray and ask God to come into your heart. That's the biggest piece of this. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to have everybody bow your head and close your eyes. And we're going to pray this prayer together. Dear Father God, I come before you tonight. And Lord, I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. That Lord, that you would be the Lord and Savior of my life. Come into my heart. Lord, I ask that you would walk with me. That you would teach me your ways. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Today's a new day. Today's a day that my old man is gone and that I am now alive in Christ. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for walking with me. Holy Spirit, fill me and equip me to be a Christian in my generation, in the world that I live in, to be bold with my faith for you. Thank you, Father God. Amen. All right.